Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. I know we have a number of electives and former electives here, so I'm going to try to run through the through the list here. Um, so my right, uh, we have State Representative Bruce Ayers, State Representative Taki Chan. I believe Senator Keenan is en route. You can be hearing from the Speaker of the House as part of the program, Ron Mariano, very shortly. Uh, we have Council Lodge Nina Liang. We have Council Lodge Noel DeBona. We have uh, any other active councils? I'm, I'm getting to the former. He's a, he's a way back former. Um, yeah, so I, I see former Councilor Kevin Coughlin, former Councilor Michael McFarlane, former Councilor Jay Davis, former Councilor Michael Cheney. Um, they get all the electeds and formers. Thank you very much for uh, for being here. Oh, former Councilor Tim Cale, of course. Uh, you forget he served as a councilor. He went on to bigger and better things. Who is Joe Newton? Assistant City Clerk Joe Newton. I know a number of these folks served with Joe Finn a number of years ago. So um, welcome everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. It's a pleasure to be part of such a happy occasion with the life of a city. Uh, so much going on in the city, so much development we see. And part of that um, part of the development discussion for years has been how do we try to make things affordable for people who otherwise couldn't afford a market rent. And one of the real movers in that whole concept was when Joe Finn was a city councilor. Uh, Joe Finn's life's work has been about helping those that can't help themselves. I remember when uh, Leo Martin was chatting, the owner of the building, him and Cy, and uh, he's, I remember him saying to me, I, I always remember it, he said, Mayor, where are the waitresses going to live? Where are the cab drivers going to be live? Uh, those folks that live on the margins, uh, where do they live and how do we keep a place in Quincy that they can call home? And I never forgot that. And I think the role of the Affordable Housing Trust Committee uh, takes that mission seriously. Uh, and it was really the inspiration of Joe Finn, along with a number of other electeds, um, that really brought that to light for Quincy. So we've been fortunate to have the Affordable Housing Trust as part of our process that the Planning Department oversees. Uh, Jimmy Fatsy's and his team at the Planning Department, uh, and a percentage of that goes in so we can do projects like this. So with that, the first uh, folk person I'd like to bring up who's a director for the housing program, and I'd like him to recognize the members of the Affordable Housing Committee that are here, that's Tom Fabrizio, also a former city councilor. That was way back. Uh, we were probably a town in those days. But uh, uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a great day. Um, I've been fortunate to be involved with this committee since 2009, and this is one of the more uh, important projects uh, to have these affordable units in the downtown speak volumes of the work that this board has done, and going back uh, to Joe Finn and his, his involvement. So with us today uh, from uh, the trust is Jim, Jim Fatsies. His associates in the planning of the board that make this work, uh, Sherry Zhu, Sean Glennon, and the attorney that works with us, John Bacon, is here today. So I'd like to thank them. Also, uh, members here, uh, Mike McFarlane, Paul Connolly. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> You're very popular, Mike, still. There you go. Or was that for Paul Connolly? Uh, and Donna Rackerman. Um, She's here with us today, too. So thank you for this day, and thank you for this great project. Uh, next up, uh, uh, Leo Martin's been a, a real estate developer uh, for a number of years uh, here in Quincy. You um, have a number of properties, and, and I would suggest that Leo is, is one of the folks that doesn't necessarily need an ordinance to help people that are on the margins because he... I know how he operates his buildings, and um, he helps a lot of people on a regular basis. But uh, this is Leo and, and Sai's building, and so when Leo came to the city, the Affordable Housing Trust and the planning, uh, there's a lot of detail that went into this. And if you remember this building, perhaps you don't, uh, but this beautiful masonry was all covered up. It was probably done in the 50s or 60s. It was a very unsightly, homely building, uh, and uh, Leo is part of the development to restore the masonry you see the cornices, the beautiful storefront. It fits beautifully in the downtown. So its its role and mission is really to provide housing, but it's also an asset now to the downtown. So with that, I'd like to welcome Leo up to say a few words. Leo Martin. Thank you, 
I'd like to thank everybody that came today to support us. Uh, I'd especially like to thank Mayor Tom Polk and his administration and the Quincy Affordable uh, Trust Fund. They were absolutely terrific to deal with in every way and very supportive of us. I'd also like to say uh, congratulations to Joe Finn. Uh, he's a guy that I've watched forever. He's always there for people that need a hand and uh, I think uh, he's a good example of just a good guy. So thank you. As most of us here know, Joe, uh, Joe ran Father of Bills for many years uh, and then went on and he has been a state leader for many years on the issue of homelessness and trying to get uh, working families a place to live. And I know he's become a great confidant uh, to the Speaker of the House. I know over the years they've met on a number of occasions uh, and Ron Mariano, in his own right, has been a great supporter uh, of affordable housing efforts uh, as well as economic development across the Commonwealth. And I know they've become good friends, and uh, I know the speaker checks in with Joe from time to time for advice on this issue because nobody knows this issue in the call of the Massachusetts better than Joe Finn. Mr. Speaker, would you like to address the crowd? Speaker Mariano. Thank you. Thank you, and I am thrilled to be here for a whole host of reasons, and I'd like to begin by, by thanking Leo um, for working with the agencies in Quincy to provide working class affordable housing, the thing that we so desperately will need as we change and upgrade the city of Quincy. I'm here basically because a long time ago, and I'm not going to embarrass Joe by telling him how long ago it was, but it was over 20 years, and it wasn't quite 30, but it was pretty close to 30. And we have some of my colleagues here today, Tacky, Bruce, and I see a former colleague, Mike Bellotti, who uh, looks a little bit like Travis Bickle now, but... Uh, <laughs> He's here with the sunglasses, so it's good to see you, Michael. Um, a city councilor walked into my office when I was brand new. And when advocates come in, especially to a new rep, they just come in hard charging because all of them think that their issue is the most important issue in the budget. And you have to give them credit for that because that's why they're so energetic and so forceful and trying to get help. Well, in comes Joe Finn and he starts and he had Joe Timothy with him, I believe, at that time. And Joe Timothy was, was the quintessential political mind <laughs> in the housing industry at the time. And Joe started, and he was overwhelming me with numbers and details, and I said, look it, I said, I've de dealt with a lot of you folks. You come in and ask for money, then I never see you again, and I don't know if we have less homeless people, more homeless people, or whether you're just shipping them out of state. No one knows exactly what happens. And Joe made a commitment then. He says, I will be back a year from now with the results of this program. We'll sit down and I'll explain to you exactly how this program has worked or if it hasn't worked. That's how confident he was in his, in his work. Well, lo and behold, he did come back a year later and the numbers were astonishingly good considering no one else had ever come in with any results. So he looked like a genius. <laughs> And, and, but he was still pitching me. And I'm, now I'm on his side. And, and Joe Timothy finally had heard enough. And he interrupts Joe and says, listen, when you get to yes, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the lesson Joe took with him now. That he uses quite well now. We, we, we meet once a year and talk about what's going on in the housing industry. Uh, Joe has been an outlier 
for all the right reasons among the advocate community. He, he wants results and he wants to see results. And in a community that is divided in, in certain instances, you don't always get that cooperation in getting the information that you want. But Joe is first in line to get it for you. The first in line to have an honest discussion about what's right and what's wrong. So I can't say enough about the admiration I have for Joe Finn as an advocate and as a legislator, a local legislator, as a city councilor in, in his work for the city of Quincy. It's been a real pleasure to get to know Joe. It's been a great honor to work with him. Uh, I can't tell you, I, anything I know about housing I learned from Joe Finn. I don't know if that's good or bad, Joe, but <laughs> you'll have to be the judge of that. But I do think that he deserves an awful lot of credit, and this is just a small token of the recognition that he deserves, and that it's well, long overdue. So I just wanted to be here to say congratulations to my friend, Joe Finn. Now, Senator John Keenan uh, did arrive. John, I know you served with Joe on the city council. Would you like to say, come up and say a couple of words? Never say, heard a politician say, no, thank you. I was going about his joke, so. <laughs> Um, good morning, I guess it's still morning. Good morning, everybody. It really is a pleasure to be here and an honor to be here uh, to, to say hello to Joe and congratulations to Joe. Um, we served together on the city council for many years and sat next to each other for a few years and Joe always had a very unique perspective on what was going on. It was always a perspective born of homework and just good common sense. As I've gotten to work with him uh, through my role in the legislature, it's the same thing and the speaker touched on it, Joe does his homework and he has a really, really different way of looking at things. And we may get three or four advocates that come into the office and want to talk about this or that and they talk about it and then Joe comes in and, and he reinforces what they say in some cases and he challenges what they say in other cases and as the speaker alluded to, you're pretty much always right. <laughs> um, Joe uh, brings such commitment to the cause and as chair of the housing committee, uh, the Senate chair of the housing committee, he is an invaluable, invaluable resource to what we do on the committee. He has left his mark not only here in the city of Quincy, but all across the Commonwealth, and there's no denying that at all. Uh, Joe, uh, congratulations to you. And just a final note, Joe does so much in his work, and he does so much in his community, and he always has. But what Joe does uh, beyond that beyond the idea of just helping people in his profession. Um, what he does in his private life and his family life is, is every bit more remarkable. And uh, Joe, you truly are a beacon for all of us and it's a truly an honor to be here today. So congratulations and thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, I got to know Joe Finn many years ago, some through politics, some as a department head at the time. In those early years, there was a, there was a little friction, I think, uh, I think he'd admit. Uh, my most grueling time standing before the city council as a department head was when we were proposing synthetic turf for the Veterans Memorial Stadium. And Finn and Romani grilled me for three and a half hours about that field. Uh, and, and it happened in the end, but Joe always did his homework and he always made sure everybody else did their homework. Joe became council president uh, when I was mayor and we became close. Uh, I always appreciated his, uh, his respect for the institutions, his respect for the appropriate dialogue at the council, at the council level, uh, his understanding of, of the basics of government, which we are in there to help people and to move things forward. During the pandemic, one of the early calls uh, we had, Joe and I spoke about what are we gonna do? What, what can we do as a city to provide some of our resources that was provided by the feds and the state to help those folks uh, in that homeless situation? And he was terrific in giving us guidance. We ended up going to the YMCA, spreading out our homeless population so they went on top of each other, providing them their meals and needs. Um, and, and Joe checked in along the way. We talked about proposals on how to use the hotels and did we get through that process? I mean, his. His advice to me over the years has been really invaluable on so many of those issues. Uh, but more importantly, we grew closer. When he became council president, that friction kind of went away, Joe, I think, at least on my part. Uh, I got to know him. 
uh, far more personally. And, and of course, our, our kids became good friends. So that, that, uh, that also complicated the friction at one point. We became friends. I had great admiration for Joe. And as I said uh, early on, he really was the conscience on this issue in Quincy for a long, long time. Now I would view he's the conscience for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on this issue. And I know there's times when the administration, this administration gets criticized perhaps for what some perceive as overdevelopment. The fact of the matter is we are tens of thousands of units short in the metropolitan area of Boston to meet the needs of housing. And that's all types of housing. And keep in mind that additional market, house, uh, market rate housing also helps to stabilize rents. It, it is about getting more affordable units in play, but it also is about the greater number that helps stabilize uh, the market rents as well. So um, Joe Finn has uh, been an incredible public servant, amazing husband and father, coach from time to time, uh, and a dear friend to so, so many. I'd like to bring Joe up now and I'd ask Leo if you could have your workers um, pull the veal and the sign. Joe, step back, take a look up on the building, make sure we spelt it right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our dear friend, Joe Finn. Uh, thank you, Mayor Koch, and thank you, Speaker Mariano, and I need to do this before I do anything else. It's important, is to introduce my family. I have uh, my son, Kevin, my son, Michael, my son James, my son Ty, and my daughter Kiki. <laughs> there we go. And uh, again, they make me proud at, at every day in what they do. And finally, I, it's important for me to introduce to you uh, my spouse, my wife, Dolores McElmail. Uh, Dol <laughs> I think some of you know her, you know, and it's interesting because when it comes to love and charity, many of us are very good with love and charity at the abstract level, but Dolores lives that out uh, in real time, real space and time, every day. And she's my true north, and she's the true north of our entire family. She sets incredibly high standards for us all. Uh, and yet, again, she is the, the love of my life, and I'm so proud of her. Uh, Father Bill McCarthy once was being interviewed by a reporter about his experience over the years advocating for homeless uh, pers people experiencing homelessness. And the reporter said to him, after all of these years, what is it that you've learned? And Father McCarthy's response was, I learned that you should never have anything named after you until you're dead. <laughs> And so, you, as you can imagine, uh, given that experience, I was a little bit hesitant to accept this honor, but I accepted it for really uh, two main reasons. First and foremost, who is doing this is Leo Martin. And it's not, I've never heard it said publicly that much, but I'm guessing that Leo Martin has done more to, home, uh, to house people experiencing homelessness than many of the providers have. And he has certainly always helped those who are at the other end of the housing spectrum. And for that, uh, I believe his name should probably be on this building, quite honestly, for the work he's done in that area. And secondly, uh, Mayor Koch. And unfortunately, maybe we'll be able to make amends for this at some point, but he never got the full credit that he deserved during the whole COVID crisis. Actually, his response was unparalleled. It was extraordinary. Because not only did he actually create a situation to protect and stop the spread of that virus, but he had also managed to put people back to work who had been laid off because of that. And again, as the mayor will, knows well, we disagreed on a lot of things over the time. But I'll tell you, his response to that was unparalleled. And so 
uh, I hope that in some way I might be able to honor him as well in accepting this award. In truth, there are so many people that deserve uh, credit for the whole affordable housing trust that I'm always afraid, oh, that there's two other people I forgot I have to recognize before I go any further, is that I wouldn't be here at all, quite honestly, in this position, because I never would have been on the city council if it wasn't for two people, and that's former city councilor Michael Cheney and also one of the tactical geniuses of campaigns, Michael Berry. Where's Michael? Oh, there he is. Michael Berry would set a door knocking campaign that was analytically based and he insisted that I stick to it and it paid off. But finally, um, getting back to that affordable housing trust, we have to remember that it was Councillor Greg Hanley who actually uh, passed the exclusionary zoning ordinance and he deserves a lot of credit for that. And I think all of the councillors that I served with back at the time deserve such credit when we actually cre created uh, the home rule petition that was would create the, the affordable housing trust, which at the time had kind of come as a little bit of a surprise to us, but everybody was engaged in that discussion. Uh, again, there's a whole groups of people and I, you know, that, that, I'm, that really were such a very important part of it, some of whom are here. Uh, some of whom are not, but Nancy Callanan and Dennis Harrington in the early days did so much to get it off, its, off the ground. And you also had the people who served on it, whether it was uh, uh, Reverend Sheldon Bennett or Pastor Wismar. Uh, and of course, uh, have you ever seen a, mug, a nun mug people for uh, resources? Sister Joanne Westheimer <laughs> was absolutely incredible. And of course, uh, my colleague, who played such an important part in the early days of the trust, Councillor Michael McFarland. And so it's something we can all be proud of. And at the time, I can remember it was very important that, um, particularly for having worked with those experiencing homelessness for so long, that the Affordable Housing Trust was meant to be something more than that. It was addressing the overall housing issue that we had in Quincy at the time. And that was the way that we uh, made it work. The speaker, I don't, I, I think I, I got to acknowledge, he mentioned Joe Timelty, but my good uh, friend George Cronin from Rasky Associates, whom Joe linked us up. I think George and Rasky represents the only outside of Quincy fundraiser I ever had. So for that, I'm always grateful. I just have to tell one story about uh, Joe Temelty that I'll just share because I think it is applicable. But in my day job, I was worried because a former senator who had been very powerful in the Senate was a lobbyist. And we were on opposite sides of an issue. And I was still on the city council at the time. And I went to Joe and said, I'm really concerned. He said, what are you worrying about? And I said, well, you know, this guy is pretty affluent and he's powerful and he, he might and Joe said to me something, which you know I think there's a great degree of truth to. He said, there's something you'll learn that you're not in position to learn yet, but you will eventually learn it. There is only one degree of out, and it's out. So, uh, you know, that, a lot of wisdom contained in that statement, um, that nobody, you have to sell whatever it is that you're bringing you have to bring it on its own terms. Because in truth, it's not about influence, it is about good ideas. I'm just so afraid I'm gonna, you know, go off course here, so let me, let me come back and simply uh, uh, say, when I first ran for office with the help of Michael Cheney and, and Michael Berry back in 1999, I had a whole lot of opinions tons of opinions. And I was shocked to discover once I was elected, not the first time, but the second time, that there's a big difference between opinions and making decisions. And so I just want to let all of the elected officials who are here know how much I respect what it is that you do. 
and uh, how I honor the, your public service because it's a lot easier to have opinions than it is to make decisions. And so I, I really cherish my time with all of my colleagues that I served with, on, on, and I can't dare to name them because my memory doesn't work quite that well, but I'm grateful for that. In closing, uh, I just want to say a, a thought occurred to me. You know, as you know, I'm a carpetbagger. I don't originate from Quincy. And when I first was interviewed at Father Bill's many, many years ago, as I left the second interview, uh, Sheila McIntyre took me aside and said, young man, if you're ever to be a success here, it's very important that you understand that it's Quincy, not Quincy. <laughs> and uh, anyway, you know, I just heard that this lyric the other day that struck me. It was on, on some tape or whatever I was listening to, and it was a John Denver song about talking, and one of the lyrics said, going home to a place I've never been before. And that was my experience coming to be part of this city. Is for the first time in my life, I really felt at home. And I am so grateful uh, to all of you who have helped to make me feel that way. And if there's anyone I haven't acknowledged today that I should have, I certainly apologize. But again, thank you for this honor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks. See, Councilor Pamucci has joined us. He's also the Employal Housing Trust, and former Councilor Margaret LaForest has also joined us. Thank you for joining us here today to honor Joe. At this time, I know Leo Martin is going to uh, provide some tours. There's a couple of apartments they haven't filled yet. Thank you all so much for being here and honoring a great guy, Joe Finn. Thank you. God bless.